Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back to First Man Photography. In today's video, we're heading out into a storm to share my one-step game plan to help you make beautiful landscape photography. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Lexar. If you need fast, reliable and high quality SD cards, look no further than Lexar. Now today's title has a double meaning because taking that first step with your camera, that one step out of the front door will mean you've already overcome one of the biggest challenges with doing landscape photography. But it has a deeper meaning as well because the landscape photography genre is what I would class as creative photography, essentially where we're making artwork now, I know there are some very cynical people out there that disagree with this and believe that anyone can rock up to a nice scene and as long as they have a nice camera, can get a good shot. Now, I know for a fact this is not true because I've taken many people to beautiful places and this is not the outcome I witness. The difference is, and the one thing that turns a snapshot into a photograph is intent. By being intentional, every stage of the photographic process is what creates images with interest and meaning. We plan carefully, we think about the weather, we pay attention to light, we consider our story and composition, we edit our photos with a style that feels right for the conditions, and we bring it together into a final print. It's never luck either. Even if you take an unplanned image, you've already made the effort to get outside and explore. You've practiced and then nailed an opportunity that presented itself. So let's head out into the storm and put this simple game plan into action and hopefully come away with an image good enough for the Continuum project, which is something I started a few weeks ago as a new way to think about selling prints. But we'll talk about that more at the end. Today, we're in the middle of Storm Unit. Forecast on news was suggesting there's absolutely no way you should go out, but what I find is that I like to judge my own risks because whilst there is risk, there's an upside reward to it as well. And that's what I'm hoping I'm gonna get today. <laughs> as it starts to hail, oh, it is actually quite windy. It started off pretty sunny, pretty calm, pretty still, but this bad weather is rolled in really quickly now. So I think my goal is just to be, let's just give you a quick wipe. My goal is gonna be to try and brave the weather for the point when it starts to turn because there's breaks in the cloud. As you can see over behind me there, so if I can capture one shot, maybe two, I'm gonna be really quite chuffed. That's the goal anyway. We'll see if it works out. Right, so I'm into a nice position, a beautiful scene to shoot, and the wind is absolutely brutal. The rain has stopped though, and as that's happened, some really beautiful light is erupting behind the cliff there, and I want to capture that, because it's just, it looks really interesting, and it's sort of casting a light down onto the whole scene, and it just looks incredible. But the wind is creating some difficulties and there is still a little bit of rain in the air. So I've, my, my main two problems are that there is water going onto the lens and because the wind is so strong, it's moving the camera around. So that's creating a small technical challenge that I need to try and solve. And it's, it's really quite simple. So for the settings, I'm going to do F11. I'm currently at 1 50th, which I think is just about fast enough. But to get up to that, I have upped my ISO to 320 because I want to raise the shutter speed away from say like one eighth of a second where there's every chance the wind will then introduce some movement into the image that I do not want. I want a nice sharp image across the frame. For the composition, I love that cliff. Oh, so much snow around as well. I love that cliff over there. That's hitting the left hand portion of my frame and then the lake down at the bottom there is on the right hand side and then kind of using all that light in the distance which just looks amazing now I'm gonna have to come around to the camera and just fire off a frame here that looks good but there is water on the lens so that's the second technical challenge like I said 
So I'm manual focused, so the camera's locked off. So what all I do when I am shooting into the rain like this, into bad weather, is give the, give the weapons wipe. I usually do this two-handed, press the button, take it away at the last second, and I think I have absolutely nailed that. Now, like I said the other week, people are always asking why I don't use a lens hood. Sometimes with the longer lens, I do. But with these wider lenses, the lens hoods are tiny so they really don't provide any protection for the lens whatsoever. And even if I was using a longer lens here, I'm literally shooting right into the wind. Now a bit of rain's coming back, adding some more atmosphere, a bit more atmosphere to the foreground. Oh, I'm, str <laughs> I'm struggling to hold the tripod because it's so windy. Right, let's uh, wipe this off again. Quickly press the shutter button, another quick wipe, take it away and capture, hopefully, some of that rain in the atmosphere. And it's kind of, whoa, putting some texture and some different tones and catching the light down there in the foreground. I think that's really interesting. I have got the sun starting to break through. If that burns through, which I think it's about to, it's gonna be really exciting. It's so difficult to try and, trying to do everything all at once. All right, let's do that. See if we can get that going. Bracketed shots. <laughs> the weather's changing so quickly. It's so exciting. And the, as you can see, the sun has come out and it's very, very beautiful. The sun is in a great position for me, just off to the left of my frame. And it's casting this beautiful light because it's still quite low in the sky, it's still quite early in the morning, it's still the middle of winter, so that sun is nice and low. I have a new problem now though, and that's keeping the flare out of the lens very bright. <laughs> there is still some wind about, fire, and then I'm gonna hold my arm up as a lens hood. I'm still bracketing. And again, a lens hood in this situation still wouldn't work because it's too wide, the sun would still be on the lens. So using your hand or some kind of other flag, a box or a lens cloth, something like that, but your hand does the job the best, I think. You can keep the flare out of your lens. And oh, that's just absolutely beautiful. The light on the land now. Oh, I'm gonna drop this camera at some point. Ah, it's all going on today. The light on the land just looks beautiful. And there's still some of that rain around. So it's making the foreground interesting. But then the sky has just opened up into this beautiful blue. I've then got that warm winter sun, just totally changing the mood of the image, totally changing my mood as well and how I feel about it. And that will then feed into the editing of this picture. Two images of the same composition. One, a dramatic, wintry, stormy type image. And that second one, although we're still in the middle of a storm, it's gonna look much brighter, much sunnier, much warmer, much more saturated, I suppose. And I think what we'll do is go back to the studio and I wanna share a bit of that editing with you because I get a lot of questions about how I edit my pictures. And the, the truthful answer is is quickly essentially because i don't like doing it i like it to be quick and i like to make subtle edits that kind of enhance the mood that i've been feeling and within the space of about 10 minutes i felt two very different moods from this scene So we'll look at those images in a minute, but as you know, this video is sponsored by Lexar. And in my opinion, Lexar make the best memory cards for photographers because they're fast, they are reliable, and they are high quality. I've used them for many years and they've literally never let me down, even when I've put them through insane weather conditions, dropped them in the water and things like that. They come in a variety of speeds, sizes and capacities and different types as well so they've got something to suit all of your photographic and video needs there's this one here which is the lexar professional 1667 i like this one because 
it's just a perfect all-rounder. It's the kind of card that you just stick in your camera and then forget about because it's good for your 4K footage. It's good for your fast burst rate stills. And yeah, it comes in really big capacities so you just don't need to worry about your cards. That's what I want from a card. I just want it to work and I don't want to have to think about it too much. And that's what Lexar provides. So go to the link down below, check out Lexar, give them some love for sponsoring this channel. Okay, let's go straight into Lightroom. All I've done with this one is to take the raw file, which is this here, and then to add my bad weather preset. Now, this is one that I made quite a while ago. It is available for download as part of your free trial to the raw room. All it does is pull some of the greys out. It removes some of the greens and the yellows from an image as well, and then adds blues in using the color grading into the shadows and to the highlights as well. But I did adjust this image a bit just to use the preset as a starting point and then craft it into what I wanted. One of the main things I did, you can see, is to crop the image because in the in this more dramatic image, this area down here isn't really doing anything. And then with the saturation, I did reduce the blues out of this a bit because that preset added a bit too much. So I used that as a starting point, brought it back. And then I think what I did was up the clarity a bit as well. And that just brought all this beautiful detail out of the trees and the cliff there which I really, really like. It didn't take me more than two or three minutes to edit this using that preset. And that's the kind of editing I really love. Let's go on to the main image. I'm really, really happy with this image in the end. I love the, I love the color. I love the mood. I love the atmosphere. I love this bit of rain and mist that you can see in the distance down here. I think it just adds so much atmosphere to this image. Is that, and as you can see, there's not that much editing has gone on. Bit of contrast, and then I've adjusted the white balance and the color very to a very small amount as well. As you can see here, I've added a bit of the highlights, a bit of yellow to the highlights, just to balance. The main thing I've done with editing this is to control the luminance because I was I'm working within the limitations of my camera. So I've actually used a fair few gradient filters just to control the luminance all over the image. So for example, in this bottom left-hand corner, I've darkened that off a bit. So it feels natural still of having that darker foreground and brighter high highlighted areas in the sky. So it's a natural journey through the image. And I think that's really important with landscape photographs to, to, for it to feel natural because if the foreground's brighter than the sky, that's it just doesn't feel natural because that's very, very rarely the case in real life. Now it's gonna be time to print that and I will give you some details of how you can now buy one of the five limited prints of this image in the Continuum series. But let's get it sent over to the printer first. So here is the final print and I am very, very pleased with it. It looks natural, it's beautiful and connects with everything I was thinking and feeling about the landscape at the time. It's A2 in size on this beautiful Canson rag photographique, which is a smooth cotton rag paper, perfect for this photograph. This is now available for sale as part of the new Continuum project, which is where the artwork is limited by space and time and priced to give everyone an opportunity to own it as long as you are quick. So there's five prints available uh, and will only be on sale for seven days. And then after that, they are gone forever. I've switched it around a bit from when I launched a couple of weeks ago. So one of five is the most valuable and five of five is the most affordable. So use the link down below, check it out. And I'm also very grateful to the five people who picked up the first Continuum image. So don't forget, be intentional and just take that one step out of the door. And as long as we are willing to practice, work hard and always learn the next great image will never be out of reach.